Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on for our third deck today. Uh, that is going to be our third chance at the treasure constructed format. We got to our five wins last time with five color espers. We got the Kempster's Insight uh, unlocked, but we're still going to play some more because it's a really fun format. And so we've done two five color decks where we're really uh, stretching our mana or really just using our treasures to fix our mana. I guess that's more apt. We're not really stretching the mana too bad. Uh, but we're going to be nice and conservative here with this two-color deck. So if you don't know what the Treasure Constructed format is, I guess I could have let off with that. It is a format where each turn you get a treasure token at the beginning of your upkeep. So on turn one, you already have two mana. You, you have like your treasure uh, token plus your land drop and so on. Same with the opponent. It's just a kind of a wacky format that's on a Magic Arena here this weekend something fun to play something different and so that's what we're, we're doing here so we've uh we've gotten uh, oh yes yeah, so we've played the five color decks twice here this is basically just regular like a simic mid-range deck that as y'all know i've been playing lots of simic decks something that's a little different here because we're making sure we're going to have more mana with the treasures and everything i'm going with four vivians uh because this card's just awesome and you know being able to play it early you don't really have to worry about having a bunch bunch of them stuck in your hand, not being able to cast kind of thing, because you'll have the mana to cast them. Also, you you want more cards since you have more mana, and Vivian helps you get more cards for sure. So does Hydroid Crisis and all of these. Land of Elf or Incubation Druid? I'm not really sure which one I really want, honestly. Land of Elves does allow you to... A couple of things. One, we have the 3D art, so that like that looks cool. So we have the 3D art. It does allow you to play Vivian Reed on turn two potentially. You know, if you just play a land off on turn one, you get your first treasure. Turn two, you get your second treasure. You have your two lands with land off. You could play like Vivian on turn two already. I guess I'll probably just. I guess I should just go land war because it just looks cool. Also, it's 3D, like all these except for Melody. But that's okay. So, have I tried out Karn in this kind of deck? No, I have not. So yeah, actually, let's let's switch this up. Let's go to Land War Elf. So there we go. Let's let's try out our Simic Treasure deck. Okay, I need to update that, that deckless command to have Land Elf instead of Incubation Druid. I could see Incubation Druid being better, though, because, like, you can play either one on turn one. And, you know, Land Elf in the late game just is just like a 1-1 one -one that doesn't do a whole lot, where Incubation Druid can turn into a 3-5 as far as combat's concerned. I like it. So we can play Biogenic Ooze next turn. We have turn two Biogenic Ooze. If our opponent doesn't kill our Atlanta War Elf. Dang. We almost had it. Spent lots of gems on these. I don't have all of them, but I... Like this... Blue-green are like the color combinations that I got that I spent the gems that I had in my account on. I mean, Frilled Mystic is good, but I think I, I want lands with these these Hydroid Crises in hand and dues and stuff, so just going to the graveyard with that. Ooze time. We oozing. Boom.
Alright, I like that. That's not a removal spell for Biogenic Ooze yet. No, don't don't look at my Biogenic Ooze. Don't don't point removal at it. No. Hmm. There's a land. So, hmm. I mean, we just win a late game. Let's just sit back. Have you ever played Commander? Yeah. Commander's a whole lot of fun. Uh, I play Commander with, with some of my friends uh, back home sometimes and everything, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a nice uh, social game. Killing all my creatures. Double Double Steenkin is pretty rough. I don't have I don't have my own commander deck because I actually just kind of borrow friends' decks for commander. Um, so I don't really have a favorite commander to be honest. So do not want to shock against the red deck. So we're using the treasure even though it means the crisis is going to be a little bit worse because of it. Yeah, you're gonna have to change that. Yeah, whenever I move back to Texas, I'm definitely planning on building a, a commander deck. I haven't I haven't really just taken the time to think about what commander I want and all, and all that kind of stuff. Of course, I do like a whole lot of mana, and I like playing a lot of cards. I'm doing a lot of stuff with mana. Gosh. Another risk factor? Really brutal. Double Steamkin, double risk factor. A little rough, a little rough. And then a Flame of Keld? Hmm. Well, I probably need a Vivian and kill that Flame of Keld. I've lost so much already. Or they just get the extra cards. Sometimes restoration means retribution. I should probably start putting pressure on them. Also. Yeah, Corsair Crew Fix, heck yeah. I know one of my friends has a Gitrog monster deck that's a lot of fun. And so, like, that would be something that I'd be definitely interested in building, would be, like, Gitrog Monster. But since my friend has a Gitrog Monster deck, I, I don't really want to uh, make one. I ha have not played Storm of the Vault or Antiquities War in this format. We did play Tezzeret. That was in our Five Color Legends deck. So we're going to be able to gain three with Krasis next turn. I think we got this one. Ooh. No one knows the wilds like I do. All right, taking the Branch Walker in case we find Wild Growth Walker. Did. It's 11. 11 is an annoying amount to be attacking for. So I'm just going to sit back with this other crisis to have a little bit more D. Yeah, I could have like a, a cool angel deck with like that nine mana angel I know is really popular. 
The one like makes all your stuff indestructible. And I think it's Avacyn, right? Like it's like the first Avacyn. I like Arch Archangel Av Archangel Avacyn more. Deck looks pretty good there. Alright, we're 1-0. Oh. Yeah, Avacyn, Angel of Hope. Oh, cool, you have the... Yeah, Scott, I remember you having that Kalia deck. I remember that. Have you been have you been making that even better? I remember when you got the the Kalia you know precon and stuff and started making some upgrades and stuff. So we don't do anything for a little while, but we have like the treasures. So we actually have turn two frilled mystic here if we want. <laughs> it seems like, oh man, you don't you know, how could you keep a hand with like nothing that costs less than four? It's like, well, we actually get to start playing that on turn two. Legends London. Yeah, I remember whenever we, we used to play cube and stuff, I think you got like a a scrub land from me. Like a scrub land or a plateau or something like that for that Kalia deck, I think. Tin Street Dodger. That's an, not so sure if that's powerful enough for this powered up format. I guess we'll see though. Just mono one drops. I don't want to actually crack that. Get some blockers out. Yeah, that's... I was saying that earlier, too. Yeah, I bet Niv-Mizzet is just amazing in this format. It's like people played Treasure Map with Niv-Mizzet before to try to get treasures with Niv. Alright, you got me. Target creature gains Death Touch until end of turn. Oh, I should have blocked 10th Street Dodger. It wasn't unblockable. I should have blocked that thing. They didn't spend mana to make it unblockable. What's up, Jelly? Been missing us playing some Treasure Constructed. We played two five-color decks and uh, had some fun with both of those, did some crazy things. And now we're just keeping it nice and easy here with just the, uh, just the two colors. Yeah, you liked Captain Marvel? Yeah. Yeah, I really like that movie, too. So we could Krasis for six. Wow, that looks so cool. So we can Krasis for six, or we can 
just go Lana War and hold up Frilled Mystic. Try to hit some more land drops. I guess we just do this. Look for some more lands. Land. All right, good. Oh wait, no, not good. We still are to cast Frilled Mystic. We have to use a treasure still. Dope. Why am I not attacking with Frilled Mystic there? Or this other one? Why am I just not attacking? I don't know either. Did you really? You got five wins with Revel and Riches? That is awesome. Yeah, we got the five wins with Esper. We only got to four wins with Legends. We're currently 1-0 here. So we technically don't, like there's nothing that we can that we can win in this format anymore, but it's just fun. <laughs> That's true. Assassin's Trophy definitely has less of a downside when you already have lots of mana. That's definitely a fair point. I don't even know if that card's really that good here. I just don't want to deal with it. So I'd like to draw a land. A land means we get to Krasis for eight. The best deck I've seen in the format. I haven't seen anything that I'm like, that I was soup that I think was, you know, like head and shoulders above anything else so far. I do think a uh, deck built around Niv Mizzet, like I was talking about, could be really good. I mean, I think so. Like so far, I don't know if that we've seen anything that's better than the five color Esper deck that I played just a little bit ago. I'm I'm high on that deck. Would you like to see what's left of Scala? I get this flame no and killed out of here. Restoration was painless. I do think I do think mono blue. Like mono blue with like I think there's a, a really good mono blue deck in the format where you know, like, you're, you're mono blue, you play all your islands, you play Tempest Gin and everything, but, like, the kind of not great cards in mono blue, you can just replace with other colors because of the, the treasure, uh, because of the treasure token. So, like, I think you can play mono blue with, like, Cast Down, for example, or, like, you know, you can get, like, an actual good removal spell. I uh, guess you could play Mortify if you want to destroy enchantments. So... And then you can also you can play like Mortify and Lyra for like the mono red matchup. If you want to go that route. <laughs> now you got your equipped toothbrush today? Heck yeah. Oh man, that's such a good toothbrush. I used it twice today actually, this morning and then after lunch. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Alright, fine. I'll play this Branch Walker. Kind of didn't want to play Branch Walker. Perfect. Yeah, that looks perfect. <laughs> so yeah, mono blue Esper, or you know, you could go you could go a different way. You know, you can just play, you can just you can just play Hydroid Crisis in your mono blue deck, or Nickel Bolas, or you know, things like that. But, you know, you have, like, good interaction. Do I want Jade Light? No, I want this 
land were off in play. If my opponent has a Niv Mizzet soon, I'm gonna need to be able to entrancing Melodia. Basically, would like to find uh, Vivian to try to destroy the Reclamation. Well, so the problem with playing Krasis in normal mono blue is you need basic islands for Tempest Gen. So you can't you can't just play Hinterland Harbors and Breeding Pools in mono blue because Tempest Gen requires basic islands. second there. No, no Tempest Gen uh, ends games a whole lot faster. It's much more aggressive. Uh, it's a lot easier to play Tempest Gen and have protection for it and everything uh, in a normal game when you don't have lots of treasure tokens as well. Frilled Mystic, that's, yeah, so we have four Frilled Mystic, four Vivian, those are the cards we want to be drawing. We also have two Negates, those wouldn't be bad either. Should have attacked first, because Fiery Cannonade being a thing. Did not get Fiery Cannonaded. You can certainly reduce the, the number of lands in your deck. I personally did not. Well, like, this, kind of. This deck has 24 lands, and I think it, and it, I, I kind of upped the curve a little bit. I put more, like, fours and fives in the deck. Dang. Deafening Clarion, good. I'm glad to have you here, Joy. So we have. Six, oh, I am one mana short from from Entrancing Melody plus Frilled Mystic. Man, that's so so disappointing. I am one mana short. I'm gonna still just try this. And that would have been really nice to have a Frilled Mystic available as well. It's definitely possible I probably had another counter spell though. Uh, 
All right, two and one. Yeah, I bet that deck's really good. You know, like being able to, to play Deafening Clarion in that deck is is very nice. And then, you know, you, you're a niv -Mizzet deck, and niv -Mizzet is so good in this format. I should have just played a breeding pool. I don't need to. I don't need to play the Wild Growth Walker on turn one. Yeah, I should have just played breeding pool. Alright, we're getting really punished for not doing that. Yes, resolve. Alright, I finally finally got the the YouTube thumbnail for this one ready to go. Okay, we got six mana. Let's just crace this for four. You know, of course I wanna find I was going to say, I want to find uh, Explore Creatures to go with a Wild Growth Walker before we just throw it out there. Final. Got that. Hey, Angel. Thanks for resubbing here for the 14th month. Welcome back. So if I play Branch Walker here, my opponent, yeah, my opponent Lightning Strikes it in response. So instead I wanted to keep Negate available. And make them have two removal spells like that. Uh, no power net, no thoughts. Going down to 10. Do they have the... Have the removal spell for Wild Growth Walker? Hmm. So the big problem with... The big problem with going with Branch Walker is I don't do anything else this turn. Oh well, really hoping we get the land. Dang. Surprised they didn't... Surprised they didn't use one Firebrand to kill the Branch Walker with that trigger on the stack. Honestly.
Treasure map. Oh, it's really going with that treasure theme. Okay, let's keep these branch walkers going. I guess that's enough for our opponent to pick them up. We would have gone to 16 there. All right, so we are three and one here. Let's see if we can get two more wins uh, before we pick up our next loss. Okay. You ready for the next set? I'm, I'm pretty ready for it, too. We got, you know, what, like a little under four weeks? It's the, yeah, basically a little under a month. The 25th of April is whenever we'll be out on Arena. So a little under a month. Alright, expensive hand. That's good. When we get an extra land each turn. There's so much mono red. And mono red looks to be a pretty terrible deck for this format. We could certainly lose to mono red here with these fives, but... Whenever... Like, so the power of mono red is it, like, kills the opponents before the opponents get to, get to play all their spells. But whenever your opponents get to play lots of powerful spells early. Red's just not going to be good enough. And we have 12 wins right now, and I think we're like 5-0 and against Esper. Or sorry, against Mono Red. Something like that. We're probably going to lose this one, though. We might have lost one more. We might be like 5-1 and one against red with just our different decks. I know with our Esper deck, we were 3-0 against red. This one, unless we find Explore Creatures, we're going to be losing. Oh yeah, Esper Control gets a lot better in this format with having a lot more mana and being able to play your spells earlier. Decks with expensive spells and card advantage get better. And so yeah, Esper Control in particular, you know, is a is a deck like that. Nice, Jolner, you just got to play Kamal's Druidic Val for eleven with five color legends. Heck yeah. Yeah, Phoenix is a deck that I could certainly see being pretty good here because that's a deck that's kind of slow the first couple turns I can see the treasures being nice for that Phoenix was the only deck you lost to a team rec reclamation. Yeah, I liked the team of reclamation deck that we just played against with our opponent splashing for Deafening Clarion. Yeah, you know, they weren't splashing white mana, but just using the treasures for Deafening Clarion. That was a pretty smart idea there. We haven't found any Hydroid Crasises or um, Explore Creatures to go with Wild Growth Walker, so this game doesn't look too good for us, but I'll kind of stand behind not thinking that Red's a very good deck.
opponents had a really good hand though. You know, like they were on the play with just just two exactly two lands. Uh, you know, all this stuff. Definitely a really good hand for the opponent. Alright, we need like a Jade Light Ranger here. Alright, Jade Light Ranger. You're our card. That's not Jade Light. Bleh. All right, so we went three two with Simic mid range. I don't think we were. Well, you know, like there's, you know, so we lost to, like the teamer deck that I I do think that teamer deck's pretty good, and you know just kind of had a bad hand against model red player that had a really good hand kind of thing. But I like the deck. You can certainly be more greedy with it though. You know, like if you want to play cast down instead of melody, for example. Uh, or anything like that, you know, you, you certainly can. So you can be more greedy with it, but I think this deck's going to be pretty strong. I, I really like Frilled Mystic and Vivian uh, in this format. And, you know, in particular, Frilled Mystic, just great against every everything, and you you get the extra mana for it. I think Frilled Mystic's a, a really strong card here, and it's kind of the same with Vivian. It's it's good against everything, too. So, like, these two cards in particular are really strong. Of course, Wild Growth Walker to go with the Explorer Package. Uh, works really really well against the aggro decks, gains you a lot of life. Krasis, of course, gives you a whole lot of cards. You may not need Biogenic Ooze. There may be something a little bit better than that, but I don't know. Ooze is just kind of a, a solid card. Maybe instead of Biogenic Oozes, you want more interaction kind of thing. But there we go. All right, so that's Simic. Uh, Simic midrange for our treasure format. Our third deck there. So, another fun deck to play. Could have Tristani. Yeah, you could just have like Tristani or anything like that. Always need the ooze, dude. Easy ooze. <laughs> but yeah, Mystic and Vivian in particular with this format are awesome. It's possible you should just have more negates. Negates are really good in this format. Um, but, you know, maybe you don't need Land of War Elf. And go like more negate, more like more counter spells and more removal instead of land war elf, uh, because elf's probably just not too necessary. Find is pretty good. I like find, cause cause yeah, cause with this format you can actually just cast finality pretty easily. I kind of like that. Well, if you just have two find, no elf, maybe just yeah, maybe just no elf. No, you cannot play nexus in the format. Maybe like two find and a gate. And I don't know. Land of War Elf is still probably good. Right? Yeah, actually. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe we take out a news for a find. And still play the elves. That could be a thing. Just trim one ooze for a find finality. Yeah, maybe two ooze, two find. I could see that. The other card you can play in this in this kind of deck is Hostage Taker. So, you know, like I was thinking about playing Hostage Taker instead of Entrancing Melody, just kind of in general, uh, with this deck. That's so that's another option. No, no split cards in three D. No, so lots of lots of things to do, you know, lots of things to to try out, and lots you know, lots of kind of crazy stuff that you can that you can do in this format. You know, you can basically play whatever you want, you know, whatever cards your heart desires, you can throw them in. So, all right, so that's Simic uh, mid range. So if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.